So this paper is about understanding what difference local press and media campaigns make to public perceptions and media representations of modern slavery and human trafficking. We were interested in this issue because increasingly governments, NGOs and so forth are actually spending more and more money on press and media campaigns. But all the evidence shows us that actually people's perception of how close this issue is to their daily lives is very, very distant. They don't think it's something that impinges on them and on their reality. At the same time, we're seeing increasing representation of modern slavery and human trafficking as a local issue. We talk about the slave next door sometimes, thinking about how exploitation is embedded throughout society. Um, we also see an increasing number of local campaigns. So what we wanted to understand was whether or not these local campaigns could actually change that perception of distance that people had about the distance between their own daily lives and their actions and the world that they live in and the problem at hand. So we conducted a thematic content analysis of local press reporting on the issue in five newspapers from across the East Midlands to identify the key news frames that were used. We then ran focus groups with local people to examine how they understood the issue and see how they responded to selected news items, whether they modified the ideas they already had or interpreted the new information to fit in with their existing expectations. One of the biggest themes in the news reporting was crime detection and prosecution. Within this theme, there have been shifts in focus. In 2016, it was raised by police chiefs as a new priority and part of the pressure on resources. This often involved listing the kinds of work that modern slaves would be trapped in, which would inevitably include sexual exploitation. But increasingly, there was reporting of arrests under the new legislation. By 2017, those cases were coming to court, and that made, meant a shift in um, focus to specific cases rather than those early generalisations. And those cases were all young men exploited in manual labour, mostly agriculture and warehouses. The most marked outcome of the increase in specific cases was an increase in human interest angles. Human interest stories are often associated with sensationalist reporting, and this was present to some extent in lurid details from the court cases that demonised perpetrators and elicited pity for the victims. This risks giving a narrow definition of a sympathetic victim as passive and vulnerable. But some of the human interest stories gave a, a voice to survivors and acknowledged their agency. They can convey the significance of the issue to audiences, and our focus group participants did indeed highlight personal narratives. It's really helping them to understand uh, the issue of modern slavery and human trafficking. Whilst the participants who were less familiar with the concept of modern slavery did mention sexual exploitation first, Others showed a surprisingly broad understanding of the issue, at least in terms of the areas of work. Um, however, there was some confusion about the legal definition of modern slavery as distinct from the more figurative uses of the term. So it's used to describe other exploitative employment practices, such as unpaid overtime. Therefore, it was persistently understood as a willing choice, saying things like, no matter how badly paid or treated, it's better than what they might get in their home country. Therefore, uh, many of the participants thought that the victims had good reason not to report their exploitation to the police, especially assuming that there was a risk that they would be deported. This meant that even the most sympathetic focus group participants were reluctant to report their concerns to police, and there was a strong preference for measures that empowered enslaved individuals to report their exploitation themselves. This was, in any case, seen as more effective than expecting the public to recognise the signs of slavery, which were regarded as unhelpfully broad. So, in conclusion, our study really showed that people did still feel that modern slavery and human trafficking was a distant issue to them, despite the local campaigns material that we saw. However, what was interesting to see was that people's understanding of the issue and the way it was represented in the press and media really did change over time and broadened out as well with a much broader representation than some of the past research on media would lead us to expect. The other thing that we saw was that actually um, people really appreciated having narratives from survivors 
and were extremely sympathetic in many cases uh, to the issues that um, people faced as potential victims and survivors. However, they were unwilling to report and that was often because they felt by, by doing so they might make people's situations worse. So what was interesting for us to see was that even though you had a more developed understanding coming within the media of representations of individual victims and survivors, and people were sympathetic towards that, actually the uh, increase in reporting didn't follow. And that was because people were concerned about causing more harm than good. I think the other key message for us was that actually we need to see more messages in the press and media uh, about the way in which society needs to change if we want to eradicate this problem.